You may remember him as Derek Nyati from Isidingo, or more recently as Zueli Digana from the hit telenovela The River. Our next guest, known for his exceptional performances both on the small and big screens. He's also starred in international films such as Lord of War during a career that spans now more than three decades. Joining us in our studio is the widely revered... South African actor, Shom and many other descriptors, by the way, I could have used there. But we'll leave <laughs> so it a little bit. Great to see you. Thank you so much for making the Thank journey you. to our studios. Hopefully, yeah. the storm yesterday doesn't cause too much traffic on the road. So, no, no, no. it's great to see you. It's lovely to have you with Thank us. Thank you for the invite. I appreciate it. And how do we begin taking stock of 30 years in the game? Let me start with the questions that I know people won't forgive me for not asking. Because okay. you're a straight talker yourself. Uh, Why did you decide to leave the river? It was time. It was time. Uh, what do you want, the short answer or the long answer? Well, we've got time today. Let, okay. Let, let, let's put it um, in the middle. Uh, generally, what tends to happen with any career is if you stay in, in any character for long enough, it's very difficult to then pivot away from it or to be perceived in any other way. Um, if, if you've established yourself as a leading man um, and you play something that, that Establish you, establishes you as being quite weaker and, and kowtowing right. and being the, the fool, if you don't get out of that fast enough, it's difficult. It gets harder and harder over time. And so um, in the river, you know, one was, was happy with the character for a long, long time. And then after a while, you know, the, we, we started growing further and further apart sure. uh, in terms of, of creativity. And then it reached a point where I said, look, I need to manage my career. Um, and, and part of that is I don't want to get locked into a, a, a situation that I really don't want to be in yeah. long term. It starts to damage your future Fair enough. as an actor. Was it a difficult conversation to have? Because, I mean, Zueli Digana and uh, Lindy Wedigana are, are possibly, you know, at the center of what the river has become for many people it's sure the, the kind sure. of couple to look to in the midst of all the uncertainty that's the the consistency throughout yeah. the telenovela look um uh, the, the the producers were generous enough in in that they understood what i was saying yeah um and and they were kind of stuck between a rock i'm speaking on their behalf and i apologize for that but they were stuck between a rock and a hard place in that the structure of the show requires that one is duped and the other is, is duping right. eternally uh, for the structure of the show. And, and now you have an actor who's saying, listen, I can't be duped for five years straight. It starts to make, it starts to comment on me as an actor. It starts to affect my other work. And, and so, you know, um, it, it, it was just one yeah. of those. Yeah. And it's natural. It's the natural evolution of any show. Sure. And I was about to ask that, you know, how much of that strategy have you carried with you throughout the past 30 years or so? Because, Always. Yeah. You know, um, interesting that you say that because in many instances, people who aren't necessarily, you know, paying attention to these things will always refer to actors by the characters they play. Yes. I don't think that's been your experience. I mean, most people know you as Shomla Dandala and not Derek or... It wasn't Swayley always like or, that. Yeah. It wasn't always like that. Um, you quoted Derek Nyati, for instance. Um, with Derek Nyati, I, I did just under two years. And it was right as it was taking off where suddenly I was being known as Derek Nyati and that gave me a fright. And I said to the producers again, look, I can't stay. Mm. I cannot have, I'm, this is, I'm, st I'm still early in the game. I still have a long way to go. And if I drop my anchor in this one show, it's going to be difficult for me to then be believable in anything else. And so right now, it's important for me to pull out of this um, and go in and you know, set my name. Sure. And, and, and so you want to be known as Shlomla Dandala, not Derek Nyati. Because if I'm auditioning, if I go into, if I'm trying for anything else, I don't want Derek Nyati to walk into that audition room. I want Shlomla Dandala to walk into that audition well, room. Well, from Ayanda Nyati, let me say that character put our surname on the map. So thanks for your much, Deep, for that. You did a good <laughs> job. But, you know, in stark contrast to um, Lala, as it were, on the river, mm. uh, Zuli Digana, the role you took on and just served was completely different. Here is a leading yes. man who is, 
Yeah, man. Again, many other descriptors I could use. Very yeah. abrupt. There's a man who takes charge. Complex. Depth. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations on that series, by the way. I, I could watch it in, in one sitting. It was, Thank you. It was yeah. that compelling. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, transitioning into that, I imagine, is something that you could do quite easily, given the fact that you've done this for so long. But how was pulling that off, um, given the fact that, you know, the character you played on, on the river, for instance, was so different? It was hard. <laughs> it, was, it was hard. It took um, a great deal of courage, yeah. you know, because the things we say there, if, if you really listen to some of the things that are being said there, they're incredibly resonant and, and true and now. Yeah, yeah. And if um, you, you, uh, you shake the wrong uh, hornet's nest, it has repercussions, you know. And so it, it took a great deal of courage. But then, you know, we're a country built on protest theater. Right. And so there's no reason why that can't uh, translate onto, onto the small screen or the big screen. And, right. so, and so it was that. Um, Firstly, and then just in terms of the process, people, people don't understand. When, when, you, when you do a character, there's a way that you prepare for it. So the way that I prepare for Zueli is exceptionally different to the way that I prepared in, in Justice Served, for instance. The entire process, it takes longer. Um, the exercises we're doing are, are very, very different. Yeah, it's quite physically um, intense, It's physically you know. more demanding right. or less demanding. You know, it, it, it's always like that. And so um, when, when an actor says, listen, I, I'm, I need to stretch, which is quite a common uh, uh, lexicon of, of the industry, is what they're actually saying is, I need to start doing different exercises because I'm getting set in this. Right. And if I do this for too long, those other exercises to do other characters become further, uh, they just are further and further yeah. away from yeah, my almost go on autopilot, so to speak. Correct. Um, I wonder how much of the script on Justice Served appealed to your decision to take that up because, as you said, a lot of the... The text, the dialogue, mm. has incredible depth. In fact, there's a huge philosophical question being asked throughout that entire series about what justice looks like to the reasonable person. And I'm not sure if we're ever given an answer by the end of it. No. Or a direct answer. No, no, we're not. We're not. Um, and and um, I'll, I'll, to answer your question, a large part of it w was incredibly resonant to me. And I, I was very fortunate to have early discussions with the producer uh, producer, writer, and, and the entire creative team there, um, where I went, listen, please, 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 you've got to give me a shot at this. You've yeah. got to give me a shot at this. Because at face value, Lala and, and uh, that character are, are very, very different. They're, and so there's always the question of, will you be believable? Will you be believable? And so um, there was a lot of, 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 of that on the producer's mind and, and on my mind where I needed to show that, listen, I, right. I really can crack this. So firstly, and yes, uh, the question is always, um, what is real justice? And that shouldn't just be the concern of, of just uh, justice served. That should be the concern of a great many institutions in the country. This institution, newsroom, should constantly be asking what really is justice? Mm. What's the truth of what we're, 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 we're reporting. It's, it's something that anyone who's got any kind of um, audience should be engaging in at all times. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose you've answered my next question. I couldn't help but notice your reaction as Michelle was reading the headlines before our interview. Mm -hmm. um, you were clearly engaging with what's taking place, which in most of your commentary, I find, actually comes across, you know. Um, mm -hmm despite the fact that acting is all we know you for, yeah. your interests some kind, uh, in some ways you know, go beyond that. How important is that for an actor to do exactly that, to engage? It's critical. Yeah. Otherwise, what are you doing? Everything you do as, as a storyteller, everything you do is political. Um, if I show men as being a certain type of way. That's incredibly political. Mm. That resonates with how then, if, if, let's make a better example. If I do an iconic character such that people emulate it, and that character is some type of way, the way he carries his hair, right? Uh, Derek Nyati. 
because of the way Derek carried his hair, that suddenly had a, that was political in the way that people need uh, black people were suddenly able to free themselves, black men, right. within the corporate space, just in terms of how they style themselves, which gives them confidence uh, about how they walk into the room, which suddenly gives them confidence about making the point that is counter uh, the current narrative, sure. and so on and so forth. So, so it's, it's the chaos theory, yeah. uh, butterfly this side and... A storm the other side. Terrible effects, yeah. yeah. And Farmer 2000, perhaps, who don't remember Derek, you had dreads at that time. I right? had dreadlocks, but playing a very corporate person. Right, right. Yeah. And many people who remember that time, and you're going to hate me for this question, no, <laughs> also remember what followed after that character in the form of, of the show that you were, you were hosting. Oh, oh, all you, all, all you need is love, <laughs> yes. How many people still ask you about that? Uh, quite a few. <laughs> as recent as yesterday, in fact. Right. Yeah. Um... Again, there, again, it, it was an, a very, very deliberate choice uh, to do All You Need Is Love. It was exactly at that time where I was being remembered as Derek Nyati and mm -hmm. recognized only as Derek Nyati, where I said, no, I need to be Shlomla Dandala. And so I took on that, uh, which suddenly pivoted me and, 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 and became that. But also, as, especially at the time, we were dealing with a glass ceiling where... Um, if you get too popular in any one thing, mm. the, in fact, I, I believe at one point it was written down as one of the memorandums of a particular network, where if you are too popular, we chop you at the knees mm. because we can't afford for you to be a star. We can't afford for you to um, draw that kind of attention or command that, that much um, attention and, and, and to have eyeballs and ears listening to you at that level when we, are, when we can't control you. One, it, it, it's a cost issue. Two, it's just fear of power and media and, and so on and so forth. And so you'll notice that when um, actors transcend that glass ceiling, generally they're removed from screens. Um, I know people like... Uh, Silo Maike, sure. Oprah Silo. Oprah Silo, after generations, battled for years to find a role. No one would cast him. And, and there are many others like yeah, that, yeah. Where, where there is this glass ceiling. And so you either need to break the glass ceiling and say, listen, I'm safe. I'm not going to rock your world. I'm not going to suddenly be anti-establishment and, 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 and so, you know. You kind of need to be careful of your own success. I mean, how wild absolutely. you're able to do it. Ab absolutely. Because... Media is incredibly political. Yeah, right. That's interesting. You know, um, speaking about the political aspect of the media, you've had the privilege, and I think it really is a privilege, of being involved in many pan-African productions. Sure. Uh, you know, a lot of um, series or, or movies on the continent, and yes. I imagine it's also affected um, your ability to travel outside the country. Yes. I wonder to what extent you reckon that kind of I don't know, trans-border collaboration can help us deal with some of the hot political issues of the day, such as, you know, some of the xenophobic sentiments that have emerged in this country. You almost get a sense that we're not doing enough to recognize each other's humanity, and that's why, in many instances, we see past each other. Well, given your experience, what's your take on that? We... <laughs> It's yes, I, I, I agree. Uh, this morning, um, I had a conversation with a gentleman who's been helping me for a little while in, with my garden. And I say to him, hey, listen, uh, what language do you speak, actually? What's, what's your home language? And he says, Kalanga. I go, oh, wait, Kalanga. Doesn't that come from Zambia? He goes, no, it comes from um, a region. And the region is actually split. Mm. Some of it is Zimbabwe, some of it is Botswana. But it's the same people. And this is really the African problem, is that we still define ourselves by borders we didn't create. Now, you can't just go ahead and, and do, for instance, what Julia suggests, which is just to pretend those don't exist, because those have financial and economic, uh, economic and, and, and right. uh, um, consequences. But you do have to recognize, wherever you can, that essentially we are one people. If you say we are Bantu, for instance, if you define yourself as um, Umuntu, a Bantu, you are now taking claim of a people that 
stretch as far up as West Africa, as far up as just south of Somalia. And so you've got to understand yourself as, Af- as African, because you are African. Yeah. And, and w- yeah, especially black people, we, we have all these um, dualities that are happening. Um, I, I have to speak English in, in this accent, because if I speak uh, uh, English in another way, then people are going to perceive me in another way. Mm. Now I'm going to be. So that's just one duality. On the other hand, I'm Numundu, right. which, which suddenly gives me an incredible heritage that is not normally taught at schools and such. But the more you dig, you have that. And, and, and so we have all these layers. We have all these layers. And we in the media have a better ability to cross those borders seamlessly mm. and, and recognize those. And so I come from that, um, that kind of school of thought. And so things like Jacob's Cross really play into exactly that. They, they, they generate a lot of gravity for me. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm incredibly drawn to things like that. Uh, if I'm, if I'm going to say I am an African, then I need to know that... Um, in Nairobi, there's that one street where, dude, if you get caught there, the caribou, caribou birds are going to get you. Um, you. And then if you turn left there, you go to. I need to know that in Accra, there's that long, beautiful street, the one with all the hotels and the building on the other side. I need to have a visceral understanding of Africa. Otherwise, I'm not African. You know? sure. Then I'm a Joe Burger. Very, very provocative, as is many other things you've once said before. Thank you so much. I think your um, experience has contributed greatly to the richness of your portrayals of your characters. I mean, nothing says 30 years of experience like <laughs> being able to oscillate in, uh, through accents so easily, uh-huh. even in our discussion. Shomla Dandala, thanks very much indeed Thank for coming you very through. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're so. watching quite closely. Mm-hmm. There you have it, the man himself, Shomla Dandala, widely revered South African actor taking stock of 30 years in the industry and still going strong. Once again, thanks very much indeed for coming through.